All right, we're started. Uh, this is the June 11th, 2024 Akapai user group community meeting. I will share my screen. That's the thing that I was forgetting to do. Um, here. You can see my screen. Uh, as usual, reminder, this is a Hyperledger meeting and therefore the antitrust and cut of conduct for Hyperledger apply. All right. Uh, Stephen was kind enough to prepare the agenda for us, so we just have to follow it. Uh, we're going to go through some of the open PRs that we have currently on the project. Um, there's some issues that we think we might need to resolve before we release the 1.0 um, version of Akapai. And then there's a couple other topics that we've been carrying on uh, from, from previous sessions. So uh, unless somebody else has comments or questions or wants to introduce themselves if they're if they're, if they if it is their first time, uh, I'm gonna start with the PRs. All right, let's look at the PRs here. So I think one that was mentioned was pagination for the queries. It looks like this is ready to be reviewed. Uh, Morris has been doing the the work for it. Um, does has anybody been following the conversation here? A comment from Daniel. I don't know if it's on the line. No, it was Hasn't kind been. of in development state still, so I looked at it. Okay, so it looks like now it was open to, for review. Do you think it's he's uh, Morris is still working on it, and we need to wait for a heads up before we start reviewing, or should we start? Taking a look. No, I I think he just updated it, so I think it's re ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these would be very nice if we can get it in, obviously before one dot all functionality that's been long missing. So, uh, yes, if you Jamie and yes, other contributors can to take a look, that would be nice. And if we can get it merged, that would be excellent. Let's see what's next. What did it can't be two? It's more testing. Which one is the that one? Is that the one you're working um uh, supporting uh, Ian? The did can't be two. Third one from the bottom. No, not the did can't be two. Third one from the right above. Sorry, I'm still I'm still I, th I heard third, but my 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 brain stopped with the second. I'm in the array for some reason. <laughs> oh, this is Colton. Yep, yep. All right, and this is ready for review. We went through a round of reviews. Any updates to share or comments? I have a question. So I I gave this a try, and I you know I had some issues, and uh, so there was a additional step required to make the Docker file build. Um, I, I wanted to ask, would it just make sense to include this uh, in the uh, like in this PR so that people could just use the published image and have access to that flag? Uh, I feel it would probably make. Uh, adoption a little bit easier. So the, the last comment by Colton said, uh, we need to add a, a didcom v2 extra in the Akapai Rex. Uh, would it make sense to just include this in the, the base Docker file? Um, and since, you know, since there's a experimental flag you need to set when you start the agent. I think that's good feedback, and I, I, I think I'll have to agree with you there. Uh, that would, uh, it would make things a lot easier for people to just try it out, rather than having to build their own images all the time. Yeah, because like most people probably won't be doing that. You know, uh, there's a lot of people even there. You know, even using the latest version, they're still using older versions. So at least if we can refer to, hey, 
you know, uh, I don't know, 12.01 uh, RC or not sure what's going to be the, the next release there, but uh, that this feature is available in experimental phase. Uh, people could give it a shot. I haven't tr tr tried to add this in the Akapari requirements. I still need to, uh, I haven't touched it since I put this coming, but I, I will uh, this afternoon uh, for sure. I'm mostly yeah, interested yeah. in the, um, uh, so Daniel said last time there was a, along in this, there was a feature to sort of uh, a pair a verification method to um, a key in the wallet or did in the wallet. So that's like the feature I'm mostly interested in. Uh, but I guess I can have a look at the didcom stuff as well. Yeah, can I take a look and I guess do the final round of like testing and feedback for, for Colton? Look, we can probably wrap this up fairly quickly. And I, I agree personally, like having it as a experimental feature that is shipped by default is probably a good idea. As we we're trying to does, move to the computer regarding. So. Does this PR uh, add any change, anything like if people don't set the flag when they start the agent? Does it have other things or is everything sort of? Uh, hidden behind activating the experimental Bitcoin V2 flag. Everything should be hidden behind that flag. You shouldn't have any differences in behavior if you don't set that flag. Okay, yeah. So, so I think it would make sense then to just include it uh, in the, the the base Docker file. Yep. Any other yeah. thing, real quick? like you guys have it handled then the only thing that i don't quite know how to work is we have that sonar cloud check now for test coverage and i don't have a admin uh rights on sonar cloud so i think if you want to merge something that's not fully tested you have to disable it in sonar cloud merge it and then re-enable it the checks after so i don't exactly know how that's going to work but i'm sure we can figure something out right there must be a way to to bypass yeah checks like a, a admin I, type of thing i think wade is the only one i know that has admin rights and the sonar cloud account but when it's ready we can figure that out yeah all right. What's next? Okay. I can't, I'm not going to be able to flag anything because I don't have right permissions to repo, but uh, is there anything else in our PRs that we need to definitely merge before 1.0 other than what we mentioned, Bitcoin v2 updates and the pagination endpoint? Uh, for me, no. I, so I have two PRs, the add proof key issuance option, which will probably just uh, get closed since the, the feature I want will likely be in the Didcom V2 initial implementation. Um, okay. and, and the other one is the enable no transport mode as a startup parameter. So I uh, worked on it a little bit. So the last time I just made it so you, you could set a, a no no transport option when you start the agent and that would make it, you didn't have to uh, put your inbound transport, outbound transport and endpoint flags. Uh, so the addition I made since then is it actually doesn't load the transport plugins if you set that flag as well. Uh, so you get a more lean uh, swagger interface. So that, that's useful for people that just want to leverage like issuance, storage, resolving functionalities without the they, they don't need did come right. If I just want to, you know, manage dids and sign credentials, and uh, it allows you to do the thing. It, it's very similar to the no ledger option and design that you know it prevents you mm -hmm. to start up your agent in a more simple way. Um, yeah, so I'm still there. There's one test that that's failing, so I just need to to figure out uh, how this works. But uh, probably next week, this is going to be out of draft. 
wouldn't you need you said issuance wouldn't you need did come anyways to issue credentials so a lot of the work i've been doing now is just a i want to sign a credential but i i don't need uh did come right i don't need did come protocols because i'm just signing the credential uh, getting the payload and you know storing it somewhere else like my my controller just want to send a credential and get a vc oh, back to the api and then i store it uh, somewhere else or i publish it or things like this i see okay uh, so yeah I so you're just by... doing the, the packaging of the of the payload and yeah and it's just like right now like i still need way. to set the dicom stuff even if i don't use it and you know having a no transport option seems like it would make sense just you know, if I just want to set no transport and don't have to bother about defining my inbound transport, outbound transport that I'm not going to use. Okay. It's more a quality of life thing. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Uh, the two small ones at the top, there's a depend upon change. I guess maybe we can take a look. The I'm first looking at Jamie. I don't know if you have looked at this at this already. Yeah. So no. it, depending on the volume of these we get, like I open an issue to try to see how we can automate this. Uh, uh, you mean automating merging? No, uh, automating because that, that 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 I think we defined. We went we went over it and we kind of like thought that it was not a good idea because there's not, a not, lot of all. not merging, but uh, a bundling the requests right because right now someone manually has to go and you know make a pr with all these dependencies and bundle them together yeah or uh, or merge with them yeah, yeah so basically if dependabot says that there's 50 different changes it creates 50 different pull requests instead of just like one yeah and that's you know i think it could be a group but that that's gonna depend. Like we'll see, like how enough. Like if there's a hundred a week, you know, of course, like it'd be nice. If there's one a week, maybe we can live with it. Uh, really depends. Yeah, maybe yeah. I've been like... merging them lately. Um, I think there is some grouping that could be done. Like especially with the there's like a whole every week there's minor uh, dev dependencies that could easily be grouped, but it hasn't been unmanageable. So I think we can just see yeah. how it goes for a bit longer. I, agree. I know like there was one... conversation about whether to group them or not, because sometimes just one dependency breaks the whole merge anyway. So Yeah, I think that one of the biggest concerns that someone raised was that if there's too many, it just creates a lot of integration test instance. Mm -hmm. uh, which sometime, like if there's a lot of them, you know, some are going to fail and it's just, uh, so, but yeah, if it's not causing a problem yet, uh, we can just keep going like this and if it starts to be too much. Yeah. See if we can keep, keep on top of it. And if it starts getting out of hand or we, we have actual, you know, we, we define very good patterns that we could follow. Maybe then we can do some refactoring of the depend upon manager. Configuration. Okay, and then I see that there's a section, a, a PR for for section environment variables. Um, have you had a chance to look at these yet? Wait. So in case you're tagged. It sounds like something that we might want to have for one dot if we need to have environment variables. Yeah, I think there was an issue small. with the DCO on it. I, I I think we're totally fine with the content. It's just there's some um the DC, dco needed to be updated on it so if you scroll looks like down it looks like yeah the is being fixed okay he's fixed it okay yeah so it's yeah running just, into yeah i just kicked off the tests a, a little while ago. okay okay so that's 3028 yeah i haven't got through my my list of uh prs this morning all right let's let's see how the i mean if the integration test fail with a document change I'm going to be very unhappy, but more, more things have changed, have happened. Okay, these are the PRs. Uh, anything else of note that anybody wants to flag? Otherwise, we can move on to the issues. Uh, 
All right, let's take them as a note. Over here, let's see. There's, we're just gonna open direct issues that Stephen has noted, and then we can go over others. Um, these are issues that would be required for the 1.0 release. Um, OB connections between Akapai and Credo. Uh, do you want to expand a little more, Jamie, on what's going on with this one? Um, I'm not a protocol expert right now, so I'm not exactly sure what the problem is. It's looking more like a Credo issue, I think, at this point, but there's a bunch of conversation there. Um, just a couple different people were trying to just use OOB connections with the latest credo to the latest Akapai and we're getting errors. So we definitely want to make sure this is resolved. Be, yeah, but. okay. It might not be work on our end though, but that's what you're saying. We needed to investigate first. Yeah, I tagged Daniel and Akif, but they never answered, but there's a bunch of other conversation about from more credo people on what's going on. Okay. All right, we're gonna have to try and engage with my quarters necessary here. I haven't I haven't been keeping up with these, so I'm I apologize. I'm not too familiar with the issue. It doesn't sound like a big problem, but we just yeah. have to figure out where to fix it. All right. The next one that was flagged was validation of presentation when non revoked is none. So I guess this is re revocation interval for non-revocable credentials or ju or just when one side of the interval is is um is missing. Yeah, I didn't know hundred percent understand this one either. There Sorry, don't we have some guidelines somewhere on how to do revocation? Because I know there's we've had like lots of issues dealing with all of the logic around revocation issues. So there's there's a document somewhere that has some best practices. Yes, there is a best practices. I think is in the RFC is repo. I can pull it up. So I think we should we should just make sure that I mean if if as long as we're if we're following best practices if it's working then I, I don't think we should spend a ton of time trying to work around a lot of these revocation edge cases okay yeah that makes sense um i'll try to take to, to find out where that is stored i think it's in the RS, areas rfc is right people if i remember correctly yeah i can I remember when we put it there i can find it and put a link to the on this um issue if you want okay yeah that, that would be good and i i think your your thinking is what's the issue number right here is 3018 okay i'll take a look yeah i think if things are working as specified for for the for the guidelines i guess maybe we don't do it for one that there i would still be open to having like you know recommendations on what would be nice to change potentially, but then becomes a nice to have instead of being like a, an actual fix. All right, so this is out of the way. Uh, oh, another thing with for the, is this revocation again? This is just me, it's a non-cred specific. <laughs> okay, yeah, and, and there's some, some tweaks that you have to do. Okay. In version 12 at all, under recursive bot key flag is missing. Looks like you did a little bit of reading on these VN already. This is like an upgrade are, path. Yeah. Those who have a recommendation from Steven. Uh, is this something that we need for 1.0 though? Or is it like a, a patch to the current version that is not really necessary? 
I don't know. Um, I guess if it is not setting the wallet key and it's the default key is setting to an empty string, maybe we need, yeah, we need to fix it before one, but otherwise we're getting a, a wallet with a default empty key that can be hacked. I know Ian was asking Andrew and stuff. And... Right. Yeah, we're going to have to follow up on these, I guess. Lots to follow up on. Yeah, that one we'll need to follow up. I think Stephen said uh, Stephen pinged Andrew and yeah, I'll Cause... I'll um, maybe try to ping him and see if he had any luck. Otherwise, I'll ping yeah, Andrew because I can get I think, him. I think Stephen has uh, an approach. So I think for Stephen's last comment is what we want to do. But I, I I'm just not familiar with uh, like Askar has the key the key is optional mm -hmm. and in one of the one of the commits i made a while ago i made it required as a, as a parameter an input parameter and then that's breaking uh this guy's ability to upgrade and i'm not sure about the logic around why in ask our wallet it, it was optional and why repeat right. available and stuff like that so and andrew i think we need to just get andrew's opinion before we we fit before we fix it. All right. Next one is regression here. If I'm correct, actually it's not installed. I don't think there's really anything to do here because like if you install Ascar, it installs a non-cred. So I think it's just a case where you don't install Ascar. But in that case, the other extras aren't installed either, like in DVDR. Right, because they're pulled in by that one. So I'm not exactly, I don't, I don't know. I didn't, it's been like this since a non creds was first implemented. So Maybe we would be. Is there any reason to not install Askar as a dependency, triggering these these problems? That's what I don't understand. I don't. I don't know if there is or if there has been. The only the only reason you wouldn't need it because we're deprecating the indie wallet, right? So the only reason you wouldn't need Askar is if you were using in memory wallet, which I think we want to discourage. <laughs> Right, but you still need Askar if you're if you're using the, the new Askar wallet on say Postgres, right? Absolutely. Yeah, Askar is the uh, the kind of the logical layer that works yeah. on any of the physical databases. So the physical databases are Postgres and SQL Lite, I think. And then even if you're using a non creds, a non creds still uses an Askar wallet. Right. Okay. Well, then maybe what we need to do is like just come up with an agreement that this doesn't need to do. We don't need any actual fix for these. Maybe uh, an extra documentation if necessary. But it sounds like it's pretty benign the fact that the dependency is there. They're actually necessary. So. All right. And then there's a deep, I think this is related to the LTS. Yeah. Uh, conversation. So for this one, yeah. So I we started this issue mainly for uh, doing the image scanning and also to fix the vulnerabilities as we scan the images uh, for the images, right? For the releases which we are doing. But then yep. what I realized was it's not only the uh, image scanning and the vulnerabilities, but also the features and the other. Um, supported uh, uh, like uh, the RFCs and other things which we are going to support as well, right? So the features um, in terms of what, um, um, like how the Akapai is going to work and operation itself. So I'm um, just doing a small uh, study as well, like uh, what uh, we can do for this. Uh, we have the fabric RFCs there and then uh, uh, the fabric uh, LTS release strategy. 
So I'll mm -hmm. just uh, uh, do a little bit more uh, of uh, digging and then uh, I'll post the uh, uh, comments here uh, and also open a PR. So that's what I'm currently doing. So if anyone wants okay. to pitch in and if they want to um, add their comments, so uh, please do. Um, we can work together on that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think that's what was... Um what Stephen was hoping for as well. Let's like get some some extra input and recommendations and then we can go from there. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm um, still uh, not done. Uh, so I'll finish it by uh, this week and then uh, post it in this one. So let it let, uh, let it be open. I'll uh, post my comment on this one. Yeah. yeah. And this sounds to me like a, a good issue for to wrap up before we do the one dollar release so that we can start with a clean slate with the Exactly. Support, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that should be part of the 1.0 release uh, uh, plan so that Perfect. what images or uh, what versions are going to be supported and how long it's going to be supported. So all those we need to fix and then decide. And then we need to add that in the readme so that mm -hmm. people yeah. coming in so they can uh, see that and then they can choose the right version which they're going to use. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Radeep. Thanks. All right, I think 2993 is the same one. Yeah, uh, these are all the issues that were flagged. I will scan quickly here. Is there anything else that anybody knows is important and should be going into 1.0 or has had any new development that needs to be brought up? I think we're still trying to figure out these dependencies, dependency updates that were brought up by Morris. Has anybody looked into deep by any chance? I just looked at the comments, but it didn't look like anyone knew exactly what to do yet. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, let's see anything that is particularly obviously pressing. Uh, if nobody has input, maybe we should just move on with the next topic in the conversation. There's just that uh, problem with uh, credential issuance on version one. Yeah, I, I I put yeah. a note. There's there's no issue, so maybe we should just segue in the in there. Do you want to describe it a, a little bit so we can discuss it? Yeah, I had one open and I closed it because I didn't think we were gonna fix it. But um, if you're using version one to issue credentials, and you issue, I think it has to be multiple credentials at the same time, but when the uh, registry is rotating and you're creating a new one and uh, changing which one's active, if you do that, uh, it can get in a state where it doesn't actually create or tag a new registry as active and it gets into a state where it can't issue any more credentials. But it was pretty easy to reproduce with version one, but I couldn't produce it, reproduce it with version two. So I'm pretty sure it's there's some bad logic in version one for issuing credentials, but there's quite a few projects still on version one. So um, I don't know if we need to fix it for the release or not. Yeah, on the call, the, the other people that are on the call, what version of the protocol are you using generally to issue credentials? Are you still on one on version one? Did you move already to version two? Have you experienced this type of problem? I'm trying to gauge like the, the entity of the issue and, and, and decide whether it is something we want to fix and, and take a look at before we go with one dot all, if it is something that we can potentially ignore because the amount of work to fix it would be 
about the same portal more than the amount of work to migrate to the newer version of the protocol that seems unaffected. Seems like it might not be a big problem if it's not come up. Um, I think it's mostly BC wallet stuff. Um, and then if you have a, a pretty big registry, then it has to be rotating and you have to be issuing yeah. multiple credentials at the same time so it's not like super likely to happen but it's definitely bad if it does happen because you're stuck yeah you know, the edge we... case we we had with bc wallet was with uh, them having set i think it was for development at least like a revocation registry size of four so the default size which is very small it was rotating continuously and doing a fairly high volume of issuance yeah. and revocation well, yeah. not high but enough to blow past a four size very quickly that being said i wonder it's kind of like segueing a little bit but i wonder if there is there are some considerations we need to have for um situations like these where transactions are not necessarily being completed in an atomic way in Akapai. and what i mean is some you can get in a weird state where um like the, the agent wallet is written before, um, say like the, the schema definition is written on the ledger and then you can't recover from that from that problem. That's another example. Uh, I don't know if anybody has thoughts on that. It's probably a big change in, our, in, uh, in code to get everything to work. I think it's done but... differently in different spots, but yeah, there's definitely some spots where they're not doing like transactions. So they just write to the ledger or write to the wallet and then do the ledger. And then if the ledger transaction fails for some reason, then they're out of sync where mm -hmm. it should be creating a transaction for the wallet and then, uh, and then reverting it if yeah. the ledger fails. I think it's done correctly in a lot of spots. And then I I know I've seen a few spots where I don't think it is, but we okay. have most of the protocols have stuff to like uh, resync the wallet and ledger. That was something that I'm fixing in Anonic Creds, but there's definitely paths where it's not done perfectly. Is there a, um, for, for the failure with no active rev reg, um, is there a manual intervention to get out of it? I forgot to ask that when we were discussing it. Like, it's just an exception in Akapai, right? Can you... you have to manually create a registry and set it as active and then... Yeah. Or yeah. if the registry is already created, you'd have to set the empty one as active. Maybe, so maybe what we what we want to do then is um, double check that those steps work. I yeah. think I did it in the past because this has happened a couple of times with, with BC Wallet specifically for us. Uh, and there were some situations where I could not recover. Uh, it would just even setting setting the registry manually active would not would not work, or it would work for the next for the size of the next registry and then get stuck again. Uh, but maybe what we should do is just like see if there's like a, a series of steps that can be documented at the very least in the issue for the next uh, victim of the problem, if it ever happens, so they can review it and, and fix it manually. And if it doesn't cause issues in V2, we just like move along. Patrick, your hands up. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm all in favor of moving forward towards V2. Uh, yeah, I think that the main concern is like whether whether there's like you know use cases that are live and are reliant on on v one, and would require these to be fixed 
or in the medium term, maybe not long term, but like in the short medium term? Yeah, like uh, so. So it seems here the core of the issue is when there's a low, you know, a low revocation setting in combination of using v1. So I, uh, you know, I don't I don't know if these use cases are popular enough to happen. Uh, is there a reason why you would set the revocation register of size four? That seems a bit low. Um, no, but I think I think uh, based on the investigation that. Jamie did, uh, you know, size four is kind of like something that we use has happened and we use to trigger the thing very easily, but it could okay. still happen with a higher size registry right. if the conditions right. hit the right, the right or wrong way, depending on how you think about it. Okay. Oh. Um, Jamie, since you had already looked into these and had, had already poked at it, would you mind uh, wrapping it up with the, you know, the API steps to recover and verify and, and double checking that like it's actually going to get to a state where it then rotates and it doesn't get stuck again when the the registry uh, is full, the new registry. Yeah, I can do that. I think uh, if if nobody has any call any objections, I feel like at least for the time being, if we do that, we document it in the in the issue here, so anybody can go and search. If something happens, uh, we might be good enough. We can reassess again next time if things have changed. I think that's good because it is marked as depreciated. And if we're going to fix things in version one, we're probably going to find other things to fix. So I don't think we want to do that. Like opening up Pandora's box. <laughs> probably. All right, let's do that then. Uh, there's a comment in the chat room. Wait, I'm just going to open the that comment. That's some oh, details about the yeah. out of sync issues. Yeah. It yeah, might, these... might be an idea to raise that to a separate ticket. Yeah, maybe that the, that would be a good thing to just kind of like have the take the actual focus ticket for that problem so we can get to it at some point. Do you want to copy over the, the contents? Otherwise, we can do it there when, once we wrap up here. Yeah, I can I can have a look at doing that. I just need to get through my list of yeah. peers and stuff today. All right. Um, any other open issues that are this is a dependable strategy that Patrick already mentioned, so we can probably can probably close it. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy we close it based on the discussion we had. The... Okay, I'll uh, I'll I don't know if Jamie or, or you know or, or wait. Well, I can I can like, or you can close it. Maybe I, put, yeah, it, put I, a I, comment I open, and it just. Yeah. I'll say we addressed it and give a, a quick rundown of what we discussed and close it. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so, sorry, I, I was on the phone uh, partially. So uh, did you talk about the migrate from PyLD to RDF lib issue? I saw you had it highlighted for some time. No, I, I asked if the if there was any any more investigation happening here. Uh, I was curious okay. to know. Do you have any comments? Uh, I mean, I don't have comments to the exact issue he's facing, but just PyLD in general, I know it's, uh, you know, we've had issues with the library and, you know, I talked to the maintainers and they, they do very much want this library to be, uh, you know, pass all the, the, the JSON LD test suites and all these things. Uh, however, the, the company stack is more in the JavaScript side. So this was sort of a Python version of that, that they made available. Okay. Uh, they don't prioritize this library. They they want to, but they have you know other priorities. So, uh, yeah, they're, like there's still a few issues with it uh, that I'd, I'd like to look into. But uh, I'd be curious to know if the other suggested library will uh, fix those right, or if it will 
because uh, I know it was proposed. Uh, I couldn't tell from the description if, if it was actually tested. Right. So, yeah, I, have, I haven't looked into it, to be honest, but. Because I know, like, I know a few places where PyLD, it's, it's mostly for JSON LD credentials, right? It wants mm -hmm. to make sure, it wants to, like, expand and compact and all these things. Uh, and, but I, I can't really speak to the, the issue he's having with the as asynchronous uh, aspect of it. Like, it's not an issue I've, yeah. I've had personally, so. My, my thinking based on what you just said about the maintainers and their, you know, uh, just low activity on the repository and, and the fact that the other library seems to be doing more or less the same would be on, on the longer term for maintainability. Sounds like it probably is a good idea to move to the new dependency. And yeah. We would have to assess how much work it is to. Yeah, to the only thing also is like PyLD, Pi the, the maintainers are the, the creator of the JSON LD work, right? So it's. Uh, right, uh, yeah. You know, but yeah, uh, the, the state is not ideal. Uh, the And the RFD, RDF lib there is a JSON LD component to it, right? So I don't know how that component is actively maintained. Uh, so yeah, these are things to take into did, consideration. Do you want to take a deeper look? And uh, um, <laughs> uh, I, sh sure, I'll, I'll see if I have time to to look into the RDF list. If you if you've already started looking into it, it sounds like you have already done a little bit of research. Yeah. yeah, I'll see. I'll see. Like, if it can do the the basic JSON only operations, like expanding, compacting, and so on. And yeah. I'll try to see. Uh, you know, at least in the few places I've seen it used in iCapy, if I can just hot swap it. Uh, I I don't think it will be too and too much of a difference. Uh, I think they just do some quick, you know, validation with the library, at least from the the use case that I've seen. So. Uh, I'll, I'll have a look and, you know, we can discuss it uh, next meeting or something. Yeah, yeah just, just to have a, a, little, a little more, you know, another opinionated direction, and then we can maybe make a call there. Uh, if we also, as I said, if, if in the investigation you can come up with like a, I guess, a rough because idea it's... of how much effort it takes to change from, because if it is like, you know, changing an import and then it, it is basically a drop-in replacement, that's, that makes the changes yeah. quite easy, but... It's a bit different. Like I know there was another issue about the like the Swagger interface and the async IO like uh, doc API plugin, uh, mm -hmm. which is, kind of speaks to the same core issue that the package is not maintained. However, uh, I think this is going to be a much less involved switch than the other one, right? So okay, yeah, uh, it's definitely not as complex. Uh, at least from from the use I've seen so far. Uh, like I don't know all the I can buy code base by heart, but some of it. All right. Any other issues worth of discussing here from anybody? Otherwise, we can we have another topic on the agenda or another recurring topic. All right. Let's go to that one. Uh, we talked about it last time. I'm not expecting to get a, a solution out of the hand today, but wanted to bring up again the, the issues we're having with the multi arc builds with Akapai, and in particular, not having silicon architecture like ARM64 packages for the VBS signatures um, wrapper. It's becoming, I think, more of a problem now that like it's a the silicon architecture has been out there for a few years and there's more developers adopting it. So we probably want to get these sorted out and fixed uh, sooner rather than later. Um, where is it? Yeah. Steven uh, summarized the, the issue <clears throat> last time. Uh, we have a few other options. Making a release that doesn't have the VBS signatures include, included and provide guidance at installation time. That's a bit of overhead on the developers. We could switch to another implementation, but we don't know exactly which one would fit the bill currently. And then 
the, the quote unquote correct option. So like the one that would be, would, would not alter the functionality um, for now, but would give some flexibility, which is moving BBS implementation to a plugin so that it can be selectively loaded if necessary, or just drop the support until the next generation uh, signatures come out and we just implement those. Um, has anybody had any chance to think more about these? Has any opinions? Is this something we want to do before one dot all or not? And why? I think it's probably something that we want before one dot all for the reasons I mentioned about. It was a, seems a good practice, but open for feedback. All right. Is anyone actually oh. running natively on a Mac? Say again? Is anyone actually running natively on a Mac? I think the issue happens even when you're um, using the dev container or developing on Mac and you try to install the dependencies. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 like, the, the, there are ways uh, to simulate a different architecture. Uh, this is like, and the first time this is all, I was able to get uh, Akapai running on a Raspberry Pi. So it wouldn't run, but uh, I was able to use, uh, I think it's called KimU. Um, and it's basically enables to you, you to run Docker containers and Docker containers would sort of virtualize a different CPU architecture. Yeah, I think uh, that's that's similar to what Colton mentioned last, last time, you, yeah you specify the platform to be Linux AMD 64. That mm -hmm. only works though, if you are downloading a pre-built image and running that. If you're trying to compile right. or build lo locally, or right. which is the right, case right, of the right. dev container, like you're, you're working on the code basically, then you, yeah. you get tripped by this problem. Yeah, by default, yeah. Docker tries to build um build an ARM architecture if you're running on ARM. So if the libraries that you're trying to compile don't support ARM, your build fails. Yeah. Hmm. And I, I believe there is a way uh, to specify the, uh, the the platform also for dev container uh, stuff. I've tried it and failed. Probably did something wrong. It just Could... feels wrong that we have to force that dependency. Is it uh, too much to like or it doesn't even work, and you like compile in a container that's been set to use a different platform. Hey, that's what that have... container would do. It, the, by the time you're in the container, it's too late to specify that. But I mean, like, if you so here you export Docker default platform, and if you run Bef a container, before, yeah, before you build or before you start the container, you you, you need to tell Docker ahead of time. Otherwise, yeah. Docker. Otherwise, Docker will try and use the like. We'll yeah. select a, a a matching container for the architecture that's running on. So, in the case of M1 Max, it's ARM um, or any M Max. Um, so, by the time you get in the container, it's already too late. So, your compile is going to be for ARM. Unless, uh, unless, unless you, unless you set up cross compiling within that container, but I think that's more that, of a pain. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Like, couldn't you just start a container with the Linux AMD sixty four mount the repository and then compile in that container? Yeah, that's uh, that's what the export. Like, if you look in the chat, there's a Docker export that you can do before you start Docker. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. And the, that basically should... makes it so that Docker does all of its stuff as if it was on a AMD sixty four system. Yeah. In the case of, um, I, I think really the root problem is that uh, I think it was the Ascar library that the problem. Yes. Is. And the problem is that Ascar just hasn't been built for M one Max and then published for that platform. So when you try to pull it down in your pip installs. It goes out to try to find the ARM64 package, which doesn't exist because it was never built there in the first place. I may be That's wrong, right. but I think Ascar's 
that problem has been fixed in Asgar. I think the only one left is the BBS library, which no, is... I think, I think you're right, Wade, because I used to have a problem with Asgar and I, I needed to use a specific term, a uh, specific tag. Yeah, uh, but originally since then it was... It, since then it was fixed so i think that's probably correct that it's yeah, yeah. so it's the bbs plus libraries that need to be updated now i think Asgard has been fixed the, the, the issue we're having with bbs is similar to some of the other dependencies which is like it's not one of the repositories independent and, and built under our con direct control or you know yeah it was uh, originally built by maintainership Matt, uh originally built and maintained by matter but nobody's really maintaining that repository anymore so unless we actually i i and and we've requested access to it but i don't think we've been able to get access to do anything with the repository so unless we fork it and rebuild it like fork it and and, and take it over from there or we find a a, a different way of doing it we're going to have that problem because there doesn't seem to be anybody maintaining that repository anymore well we, we can let, let's let's give it some more thought uh, on, on on how to move forward i really think we should fix these before one or all but don't really want to get bogged down <clears throat> trying to to figure out the, the perfect solution here yeah um, and i mean the other solutions were like you know just eliminating you know the bbs by the bbs libraries by default and then letting people know yeah, that exactly. it's not going to be there and things like that so exactly that that causes a different set of problems all right there's that we discussed the lts then this is one of the issues we already looked at oh this was completed by by jamie so i assume this big so is not a problem anymore all right. I think with that, unless we have any extra topics that anybody wants to bring up, we are at the end of our meeting. Okay. Sounds like we're we're done then. Thanks everyone for attending today. Day. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.